set your smiles to permanent. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 modern British sitcoms. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe for more great content. For this list, we've gathered the finest, funniest, most iconic, and most important British sitcoms. As this is a countdown of the modern greats, to be in contention, at least one series of the show's original run must have aired in the year of 2000 or later. For a countdown of the classics, be sure to check out our Top 10 Greatest British Sitcom Classic video, and if cult comedy is more your thing, then we've got you covered with another clip as well. Hi, uh, we're... Uh... A couple. <laughs> Number 10, him and her. I'm sorry for being the world's biggest dick, but I, I just I just love you. Introducing Steve and Becky. Russell Tovey and Sarah Soleimani take the starring roles in him and her, lovably berating each other to pass the time between watching episodes of Inspector Moores. What's that? <gasps> A best sitcom winner at the 2014 BAFTAs, this show's charm lies with the little things and the everyday humour which most couples see, but most comedies steer clear of. No, to be fair, it's not small. <laughs> I'm flattered. But it's not exactly going to split you in two. Annoying habits, awkward neighbours and oral sex gags, it's all here. A true-to-life triumph, it had everyone aiming to emulate the show's central characters, minus the constant spot-popping, perhaps. Oh, shit. Number 9, two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Oh, look at them! Gonna drop him. The still waters. <laughs> Two Pints follows the lives of five post millennium 20 somethings, all trying to find their way through the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of early adulthood, mostly from the relative comfort of their trusty local, The Archer. The show became a flagship program for BBC Three throughout the 2000s, and although some say it ran for longer than it should have done, with nine series in total, at its prime it was must see TV. Johnny, you're like a sister to me. You hate your sister. A brother. Your brother got Louise pregnant. A friend. You're like a friend to me. Writer and series creator Susan Nixon, who was only 18 herself when commissioned by the Beeb, always kept her audience at the heart of the show too, with viewer votes even shaping some of the most major storylines. Look at the eyes! The eyes! Number 8, The Inbetweeners. Her and her mates must be having a snogger twat competition. Well, that can't be happening or someone would have claimed you. Has there ever been a more lovable lot of social anomalies than the in-betweeners? We think not. Will J, Simon and Neil are the ultimate high school underdogs in this E4 extravaganza of cringeworthy comedy. Are you the woman who sucks schoolboys off? Sorry? Can you suck me off? It falls to the recently relocated Will to narrate us through the daily exploits of he and his friends, including, but not limited to, punching a fish to death on a field trip, treating a tramp his shoes to go clubbing, and trying and failing to get it off with Charlotte Hinchcliffe. In fact, the foursome found themselves thrown into enough chaos to warrant two post-series feature films, sparking a mini-world tour and even more outrageous antics. Bunders, bus wankers, and football friends unite. BUS WANKERS! Number 7, Gavin and Stacey. Stacey? God. To TV's best love long distance relationship and a comedy that leaves you laughing and crying in almost equal measure. Gavin and Stacy sees the title characters struggle to make their budding romance work, as Gav lives in Billericay, but Stacy is based in the Welsh seaside town of Barry. Through the pair's efforts to see each other, their families and friends meet and become close, leading to hilarious, heartwarming, and heartbreaking subplots. If this is all it's meant to be, I'm still so happy I met you. From the Smithy Nessa saga to the parents' pains at seeing their children fly the nest and Uncle Bryn's unexpected gym habit, it's the proverbial roller coaster of real emotion with a classic Christmas special to boot. Pete, have you thought about my bonus? Well, yes. Oh, right, but then my bonus. You want a boner? Order a boner. That's why I've ordered two boners. Number six, Phoenix Knights. Oh my God, sweet Jesus of Nazareth. As with many of today's top ten, sitcoms can prove the springboard for a celebrated comedy career. And that's certainly the case for Bolton's own Peter Kay with Phoenix Knights. A spin-off from an earlier spoof documentary series, That Peter Kay Thing, the show sees Kay take on a variety of roles for a look inside the Phoenix Club a working men's club in Farnworth. With the story driven by club owner Brian Potter's various plans to outdo his rival Den Perry at the Banana Grove, Phoenix Knights also proved a breakthrough moment for Paddy McGuinness. All in all, it's two series and 12 episodes of endless quotable comedy gold. Hey, what about Tommy Dickfingers? 
Number 5. Bad Education It's Class Wars! We head back to class for today's fifth placer and a Jack Whitehall comedy which took the schoolroom by storm. The award-winning Funny Man, otherwise known for Fresh Meat and A League of Their Own, created and co-wrote Bad Education while also starring in the series. Whitehall is Alfie Wickers, or Dickers depending on who you speak to, a history teacher tasked with delivering lessons to an especially unruly crop of kids. Do you even know what Ben Fresh is? It's like Febreze, right? <laughs> yeah, it makes your curtains smell nice. <laughs> and while he's by no means a born leader, his style strikes a chord with some of the students at least. A sitcom straight out of the staff room top drawer, the education's bad but the entertainment's brilliant. I spent all morning fishing this out of a weasel. Number 4. The IT Crowd Ah, I can see why you've been having problems. See, this isn't actually a computer, it's a briefcase. Meet Roy, Moss and Jen, the brainy, not so brawny and belligerent team in charge of IT at Renham Industries, a fictional and largely ambiguous London corporation. Chris O'Dowd's Roy is computer literate, but he's otherwise lacking in other aspects of life, while Richard Ayoade's Maurice Moss takes geek chic to a whole new level, although his intellect rarely translates to everyday problems. Look, why can't I go in? Because she's dead! And Catherine Parkinson's Jen, well, she struggled to tell a mouse from a monitor, but has bluffed her way to the top all the same. What is it? This Jen... is the internet. <laughs> Together, they're the IT crowd, subject for one of Channel 4's most successful sitcoms. You can try turning it off, but you'll simply have to turn it on again. Number 3. Peep Show I tell you what, why, why don't I take that, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the loo in a minute, and I can have a look at it, and then I can wipe my f***ing ass on it! For Channel 4's longest-running comedy, David Mitchell and Robert Webb star as Mark and Jeremy, two dysfunctional flatmates with an uncanny attraction to awkward situations. Peep Show sets itself apart with a POV style, inviting us into the most intimate thoughts of its two central characters. As such, Mark and Jez leave it all on the table, or should that be the ball pit? The blundering pair are polar opposites in most ways, but it's all but impossible to imagine one without the other. The El Dude brothers are back in town! Uh, uh. From Mark's weird nuts to Jeremy's even weirder wedding, their friendship is far more than just a Christmas joke. They're in it for the long haul, whether they like it or not. OK, off to my affair. See you later. Number 2. The Royal Family Oh, we've been living la vita loco now, there. Brown sauce, please. <laughs> our runner-up is also the oldest of today's entries, with our first look inside the royal household coming in 1998. Three series followed, including two acclaimed Christmas editions, as well as a string of celebrated specials from 2006 to 2012. A TV show based around a TV set, it saw Ricky Tomlinson, Sue Johnston and Ralph Little star alongside Carolyn Ahern and Craig Cash, the show creators. Jim, Barbara, Anthony, Denise and David do precious little with their lives beside Channel Hop and Chat, but what more could we want? I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime, a car being driven by a sat -nav. <laughs> The sat nav's not driving the car, Bob. Dave's driving the bloody car. A frank, funny, and poignant telling of late 90s working class life, it turns the mundane into the magnificent. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. We're in Camden Market. You're in Camden Market and you suddenly decide to get a tattoo. What are you, a German tourist? Who's pregnant? <laughs> no one? You're lying, aren't you? <laughs> is that it's one of the bullet points, is it? What's that there? Little knob with wings, is that a bullet point? Number one, The Office. Sammy, you old slag. The Brentmeister General. We're at Wernham Hogg Paper Company for today's winner, and a monumental mockumentary. The Office takes the often dull daily trudge of an uninspiring workplace and turns it into the best British sitcom this side of the millennium. Ricky Gervais's David Brent is the standout star, always on hand with unwanted advice, dodgy dance moves and laughable lyrics. Gareth Keenan and the perpetually unsure Keith ensure that this is no one-man show. Ultimate fantasy. Hmm? We're just doing the ultimate fantasy, just we all doing it. Two lesbians, probably. Sisters. I'm just watching. And then there's a Tim and Dawn love story routinely making mincemeat of our emotions. Extras was also great, but it couldn't topple this. Tapping into all the little things which make people tick, it's uncomfortable, annoying and pure, pure genius. What would you take? Don't know. Okay. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.